the greater good. Hey everybody, Greater Good Mining here. Today I'm going to repaste my Ice River KS3M. This isn't a how-to video, it's more of a these are my results video. I've got other how-to videos to show you how to do this. Um, I did this on my Franken KS2. Um, I also have other videos where you can take apart your Ice River, uh, put it back together. Um, so check out some of these other videos. I'll put some links in the description of ones that might be helpful for you so you can take it apart and repaste. But don't forget if you do this, you're taking on all of this at your own risk. You could damage your machine you'll avoid your warranty you could make things worse if you don't know what you're doing all right anyway let's just go ahead and get right into it i want to show you a few things show you my chip temperatures and take exhaust temps so we can get some before and after data so i'm scrolling through each of my boards and you might notice that like the chips that are on the outermost edge of the boards the chip temps are higher and towards the middle of the board you can see my chip temps are lower so one of my chips on board three, the chip number 56, it's always hotter than the rest. Um, the rest of them have been in the green, but it's been cooler here in Florida. Um, so sooner rather than later, I wanted to repaste this thing because I have a feeling, especially this one chip, it's always hot. Board three, chip number 56. Um, so I'm gonna repaste and I'll see if I can get all of these temperatures down on the chips a bit, but especially this one. Um, this would probably cause me trouble uh, in the summertime. So um, let's go ahead and check it out here. Um, max temp 91 is that one chip. Minimum is 62 and it's in the middle of the board. So my airflow is probably going more through the middle of the board. The chips that are on the exterior or the edges of the board seem to be warmer. And then my intake and exhaust temps for comparisons uh, in the before and after, um, intake temps 27 and uh, exhaust temps 49 on, on my KS3M. So let's go ahead and take it apart and get some uh, of the old paste off. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so here I am popping off the heat sink from this KS3M that I've been running since August. So to be fair, it's been running for a long time, but you can see this um, thermal paste is pretty dried up. Um, it's not the consistency that it should be. Um, so I'm gonna clean this all up with a little bit of, uh, you know, just simple stuff like rubbing alcohol, paper towel. Um, you can see the plastic sheet on here. I've heard that some people have had their KS3Ms where the plastic sheet is kind of covering the chip a little bit. Um, so if you guys decide to do this, just inspect the plastic sheet that covers the, the board. If it's not lined up with your chips, I have other ice rivers that don't even have this plastic sheet on it at all. I'm sure there's a good reason for it to be there, but um, I do have a few of my ice rivers that I've noticed this plastic sheet wasn't even there when I received it from the factory. So if this plastic sheet is misaligned, I would probably say it's best to just remove it. You do not want these chips covered up with this plastic sheet, okay? Okay, so in this picture, you can see I've already cleaned these chips up with some rubbing alcohol, paper towel. I pulled the heat sink off on this side and you can see a lot of the chips have consistent thermal paste covering the whole thing. Um, but check out the outer edges here. Um, you can see, especially this one, uh, this is where the te chip temps were higher. Um, you know, the airflow down the middle is probably better. Uh, maybe there's some turbulence uh, at the edges and maybe the airflow is not very good towards the outer edges of the boards. So um, you can see this one's not very consistently covered with the um, thermal paste. And then this one especially. So maybe some of this thermal paste pulled off to the heat sink when I uh, separated them from the, the hash board. Um, or maybe just the, the paste job wasn't that great right here and here. Um, so um, either way, I'm glad that I inspected this board and am repasting it. Now, um, definitely uh, give these things a good clean when you get them apart. See how there's some dust in there. My, my environment's pretty clean. I got filters on, on my intake side um, and the exhaust air goes straight out. So I'm not like stirring up a lot of dust inside of my garage. So, um, even with a pretty clean environment, I'm still getting some dust and some um, things like lint and whatever, little little bugs are getting in there occasionally. So um, definitely um, blow your ASICs out with some air, some clean compressed air, um, wipe them down, just give them a good thorough cleaning while you're in here. Um, might as well while you've got it all apart. Okay, so now you've got your boards cleaned up. Now it's time to apply the thermal paste. Um, basically just put like a little pea sized blob on each one you know you don't need a whole lot um this like little pea size is fine so we're almost done we got the last heat sink to slap back on here last few anyway slide it on there screw it back together 
Let's go ahead and slide it. Oh, hey, RPM. How's it going? <laughs> All right, let's slide this hash board in. Clicking, screwing, screwing. <laughs> and this is the moment that always makes me the most nervous. Turning the thing on, let's see. Any smoke? So far, no. All right, let's give this a minute to ramp up. We'll see what the chip temps look like. Okay, I'm getting 6,200 giga hash for a minute average. It's been running about 15 minutes. Board three, my minimum chip temp is 55 and my maximum is 79. And you can see the one that was causing us all the trouble in the first place, chip number 56 is all the way down to 71 degrees from 91 degrees. So that is impressive. Um, intake temps 25, out it is 42. So slightly cooler temps here than um, when we first started. Uh, but that wouldn't cause that drastic of a drop in the temperature on the chip. So, so far, pretty impressed. It's only been running for about 15 minutes though, so let's give it some time. I'll let it run for like maybe a couple hours and we'll see what we get. Okay, so we've been running for about one hour and 55 minutes, and here's board one and board two, all on the green, looking great. I wanna see what board three looks like. Boom. So there's chip number 56, the troublemaker. 74 degrees after running for two hours. And minimum chip temp on this hash board, 55. Maximum 83. And my intake is 25 and exhaust is 44. So like I said, still a little bit cooler than when we started, but not by much. So my results are looking pretty sweet. Also check this out, 6,300 giga hash per second for my hash rate that is that is pretty sweet um i wasn't sure if it would actually improve the hash rate i think we started with a 30 minute average of about 6200 to 6250 um, so we are a little higher uh, but you know that can fluctuate all the time so um, i am very happy with this repaste job it's made the problem chip not a problem anymore and that makes me more confident that i can run this in the summer without having any problems so anyway, um, I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please consider hitting the like button, subscribing to my channel, check out my affiliate codes and my discount codes in the description of the video. That also helps out the channel. Um, if you're looking for like an ice river, um, I have a discount code. Um, if you're looking for a tangible, I have a discount code. Those kind of things help out the channel and allow me to keep making content like this for you guys. Check out those other videos I was telling you about earlier to learn how to repaste. Um, you know, I've got kind of almost like a series of these going. Um, I might try to do my um, OG KS1 nest, you know, so um, stay tuned to my channel. I'll keep uh, tinkering with these things and hopefully you guys learn a thing or two while I'm taking apart. I usually kind of include some tips and tricks and things that I learned along the way. I just want to help out if I can. So anyway, uh, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to keep it decentralized for the greater good. The greater good.